Hey, before we get started, guys, if you would, please hit that thumbs button. Subscribe if you haven't already. That makes a big difference on whether or not you get told whether I release a video or not because it makes a difference in the algorithm. So let's go ahead and get started. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so I've already went in here and taken a look around, and we've got a cooler that's not doing so well. I've got to find out what's going on. It's a rack system, but this is not on the rack. So let's go in here and see what's actually going on. I can't tell if the system's running, not running, whatever. All right, so here's what we got. Luckily, they've already pulled the product and stuff out of here. Uh, all the sides here are completely warm but what I noticed was when I went to the rack it said not on rack so you can see this goes up through the roof so over here in this corner you can see there's part of the rack goes up this is one of the few I've seen where it's on the roof it's not normal around here I ended up having to do some work on this one right here which I don't believe I made a video on that one I was just cold compressor was bad and over here, this is the rack, which most of these are on the ground where I'm at. But when you went in there and looked at the Emerson controller, it said not on the rack. Well, anyhow, when you go down there and look, you've got one case here that's got fresh meat in it, and it's working okay. And then you got this one here that's not running. The controller did say it was in a defrost. So they've got it partially controlled by the rack but the refrigeration side of it, far as the uh, actual refrigerant level and stuff like that, is not. Okay, all of our breakers are okay. Contactors look okay. Don't see anything burnt. Let's go ahead and check to see if power's okay. Like I said, here's a relay. That most likely uh, goes to the switch for the uh, rack to shut it down when it hits temperature. Controls and stuff like that are gonna be controlled. Thermostat, basically. Let's see what we got coming out of the juice box here. 211, 211, 211. Cannot ask for better match than that let's go on down here to the bottom of these ones 211 211 211 this one here 211 so let's see why or what is keeping this thing from running not easy to see if it's got a call yet. It has a 25 minute timed off defrost, does not terminate off temperature. So unfortunately, uh, this company does not give us any information as far as the codes to get into the controller, even though that controller keeps track of everything you change. Not a lot of oil there on that control. Look at that. A lot of oil right there. Well, that is a old looking control, even though I know it's not super old. Let's see if we can see how much. Yeah, the oil's okay. So we're good on that. Ah, look at that. High pressure switch tripped. But we lost the fan because it's pulled in. That blue wire comes down around. I don't know, do they have a fan control? Look at that. Sight glass just went full on that. There is a headmaster there. So the fan should be getting power. Come over here. Where'd you put your schematic at? It's probably hidden. Let's go ahead and kill it. And that's a, uh, a weird looking motor. It sure looks like an ECM motor to me. So they got all fancy. What, that thing pulls what, a couple amps? So let's spend $1,000 on a motor or more and then save a couple dollars on electricity. And now it's bad already. Makes sense to me. You ever heard the saving, uh, the old saying, 
a nickel holding up a dollar. You're not worth a lot of money, but you're holding me up, and I am. Kind of the same thing. That's what a lot of this stuff comes out to being. So the power wires just jump into that there. Can't tell if it's burning or not. Like I said, it's you got a few different wires coming down there. Quite a few, actually. I don't know why they got so many. They tucked it in all pretty like and made it hard to follow, but I'm going to say it's probably these three right here. There's a temperature thing on there. I'm not sure. That, that there we weren't real sure about it. It's like a heater for the, for the receiver or some sort. FC fan control. That's my... Uh, I thought, yep, there's just two wires going to it. Red and black coming up, going there to there. Now those other wires they've got, blue and whatever else, are going down to here. I'm going to see if we can find a schematic to tell us what exactly, if that's just some sort of speed setting or what. Like I said, I replaced a, a uh, compressor on the other one, which is pretty simple. Condenser fan, compressor crankcase heater all in line here in parallel low pressure high pressure uh, dt to discharge temperature sensor l1 electronic defrost timer which we don't have motors likely bad here uh let's go ahead and just yank this thing out uh at this point there's not a lot i can do condenser coil looks a little hard to see through that's for sure Make sure the power's dead before we go too stupid here. It's dead. We'll go ahead and kill it there too, just to be safe. Let's go ahead and yank this thing out. Now, we might be able to get away with ordering just the motor controller, but honestly, I'm not thinking that's a great idea. Yeah, I about guarantee you if we just pull this off, we're gonna find out this is an electronic control module just like you got on a furnace. Yep, that's what it is. Gotta be careful, that's got voltage stored up possibly in the uh, capacitors. There's that plug for it. Let's go ahead and go into resistance here. We're gonna do the same test you would on anything else. This is a Gentech motor, so we're gonna check resistance between the leads should have equal resistance we got 4.7 4.7 4.7 so the motor as long as it spins is fine the controller took a crap yep there you go that's uh Right there's your problem. You can see it, the capacitor expanded. It blew its butthole open. See how these ones here are kind of like, they're not black in the middle. That one there's black in the middle. It blew the capacitor up. It's a toasty critter. Well, now what do you do? My, myself, I would just put a regular freaking motor in there and forget this horse pucky silliness plum silliness that's this is what's going to happen as we continue to get more and more efficient you're gonna have a heck of a time it's not like we're, nobody's going to carry this motor on their truck because it's too expensive too expensive to have all the individual different motors and knowing them they most likely made different ones for each model that way you've got stock multiples. Easy to change though, I'll tell you that. Yeah, and that's a, that is a sharp blade, man. Look how sharp that angle is on that thing. I don't believe you're gonna be able to get away with just using any old motor on it. RPM, 1650, 1230, or 625. Here, we'll take a look and see if they, by chance they've got one of those in here. Yeah, like 
I said, you've got these circuits here. Come down to the one that's in alarm, which is number seven fresh meat. And you look at it and you, you enter a little close, in a little, you're going to set up. And under general, you look underneath here, it says long name, fresh meat island, not on rack. Thought I'd check to see if they have any motors. They've got, looks like a uh, evaporator motor. Guess we'll call them and see what they want to do. If they want us to order one or what. We can't log in at all. You can't change anything either. So like, say you wanted to come over here and change the frost times to enter. Go down here. Level access not high enough this field. Yeah, so. Yeah, you can just look. It's kind of like a, a supermodel. You can look, but you can't touch. All the individual sensors are equal, though. 61, that tells us at least they're pretty darn accurate. Rack level, that's good. So I called their facilities people, and they gave us the authorization to go ahead and get a new ECM, and also to try to make another one work, which I thought this might work, but... We'll have to see here. Yep, that fits. Looking at this condenser coil, it looks pretty darn dirty. If it's under the same principles of regular ECM motor, plug coil would cause the motor to run harder and kill itself. So, makes me think that's probably what caused it. The nuts that they had on there fit the new motor. What I've got is a regular 230 volt half horse condenser motor here is the highest amperage one I've got because you can't trust horsepower. Everything is made cheap nowadays and you basically have to look at the amp draw more than anything. What I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and install this one, see if the amp draw is okay. Now this motor here is rated for 4.4 to 5.3. Now this one is 3.3 with a max of 4.4 so it should possibly work they said it's pretty important to have their meat gaze back because it's fresh meat and they can't sell anything if it's uh, put away somewhere else which makes sense to me now we will have to cut these uh, bolts a little bit I'm not gonna cut them a lot motor I think we're just gonna bill it out a lot of times if I can use it for later somewhere else I will and just do it as a service for them but i don't see a purpose in that because then really you're kind of possibly wearing it out for the next guy yeah we just need to trim a little bit of that off how far does that go in there it goes in there about up to my knuckle from the mounting bracket well, we may have to cut the shaft off anyway honestly it don't really matter we're gonna have to modify this motor either way yeah we're gonna have to modify this motor yeah they're buying the motor yeah there ain't no getting around that now yep it's gonna hit we're going to test this out before I cut that motor. We'll shut off the compressor. We'll check the amp draw. Let's make sure this is going the right direction first. Definitely not, you know, you gotta keep your fingers back behind there. Wrong direction. There we go. Woo! Pull some air. What's our amperage? One point. 2.2 we'll be fine she's pulling some air 2.2 amps so that's with it doing freewheeling okay we should be all right then let's go ahead and cut that i don't feel as worried about you know cutting it now because now i know that it's not going to trip out now granted yeah it's not in place but if anything the amperage will go down a little bit if not, stay the same. I'm not real sure. I haven't played the game with this one yet. On like a scroll cage, yeah, but I haven't done too much with the fan, condenser fan. So let's go out and get the little cutter and get that thing mounted in there. Usually I use my bandsaw, but I didn't want to carry this all the way back down. Gotta love that little toy. Probably cut off those weeble wobbles on that right there too. That way we don't cut our hand on it later. You can about divide the halfway mark between that blade there and you can tell that you're okay. That's your mounting bracket, <clears throat> which means you're going to be about halfway in between there. That should set us up pretty good on it. 
Looks like we matched just perfect there. And of course, you knock the screw loose. There we go. Tell me how this is so hard to do it right. Watch this. Look at that, you mount that bad boy. Right like that. You don't have to worry about it hitting nothing. It's not hangling and dangling. There we go. She ain't gonna hit nothing. She can't go nowhere. She's just hanging there. And this ain't permanent. I would say, depending on how the speed we get it, it could be in a day or two, if we're lucky. This here, should be able to unscrew this and just pick out our power wires. See that? Fancy Nancy. Guess what? We don't want to cut that plug, do we? Nope. Guess what we can cut? We can cut these. You can see the black and red are over here by the power section. All these other ones. They're down here doing other stuff. All we need is the red and black. Like that right there. Go ahead and put this back together because we're not going to need to replace this plug. Probably doesn't come with it anyway. That helps protect it from vibrating into stuff, whatever. Now, I don't know what those other ones are getting plugged into. That's the only thing that kind of sucks. Um, just to be safe, I think I'm going to do so I'm going to snip the black and red ones, or I'm going to keep the black and red ones separate and cut the rest of them off. And that way it doesn't short into anything. It shouldn't really break into anything. Out of wire nuts. Oh no. I do have butt connectors though. Let's see if these will match up to it. We may have to go to yellows. A little bit of a shake to it. It's pulling air. 2.4 amps. I'd say it probably is enough to make it run. Let's find out. Side glass did a little flashing. Not a real surprise there on that. 448. Coming back cold. Going out hot. Let's see what kind of head pressure we're running. That'll tell us if we're plugged up. It'll tell us that, uh, if we're moving enough air and if we're going to have a problem. we got to put it on 448 as soon as we scroll through the 300 freaking refrigerants we got. 236, 254, 266, 267. We're running 106 condensing temperature. And we're just coming, you know, from a form case. So let's go ahead and let it run for a while, make sure it's going to stabilize, and we should be all right. We can watch the performance of it at the controller in there in the rack room. Pick up our mess. We're looking pretty good. Running in here at 102 for condensing. Suction, I didn't bother. It's not flashing. Now, yeah, it's a little bit. I'm not digging real deep into this thing. These, this company takes care of a lot of stuff themselves. I checked the other one over there. It's holding there. I don't know if that's offensive here. Well, we can do the 50 or we can do the full dollar. Which that way, whoever you want to, you know, whatever. Now that would be a good day. You walk up on that and that's sticking to the condenser. I would, I would feel okay with that. I'd be okay with it. It is a little dirty. I think they do their own maintenance or they have us do it. I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, it's a little dirty. There's no water up here. I'd have to get my bucket and I don't know. You're scrutinized on everything. Everything's got to be not to exceed this and that. So let's see what our total amp draw is here. 14.9, middle one. 
14.3 and the other one 12.1. You've got the uh, condenser fan motor on that first two. So we're nowhere near trip point. That's a 15 amp breaker on there and we're only pulling 2.4 so we're plenty there. Compressors on a 20 amp breaker at 12.6. Well below on that. Everything's looking pretty pretty snazzy. So we're out of alarm. That's a good idea. Let's go down here to 7. Wow, holy crap, that thing is fast. We're at 33 already. Man, that thing's crazy. Okay, we just watched it shut off. It's a little bit out of whack on its uh, off point here. Kind of curious what the cut-in is on it. It says about 10 there. That's, that's a bunch of crap. No wonder why that other one over there is short cycling. Yeah, we'll see how that does. I don't usually like doing this with my uh, regular digital gauges either, but let's watch and see what it does. Head pressure's gone up. Be nice it shut off about right there. Yeah, it's still not shutting off. This is pretty much the same kind of unit I just changed the compressor on. Let me find a good spot. You've only got up to about 40 far as uh, See, it's holding there at 17-ish a little bit, maybe. Because we're differential, if we go anything further than 40, it's not going to shut off close to zero, and otherwise you'll have refrigerant in there, and it's just going to come right back up. So now it's holding pretty decent. Just with refrigerant boiling off. Boiling off. But right now it is, like I did, I get a twist to it, so it should kick off about a couple pounds. Okay, everything's down to temp in here. They don't have the thermometers down here. Yeah, they do. Yep, 28. That's exactly what the other ones say. All right, guys, so we're finally back. It's been a while. So good thing we actually got the right one or put the one in there. and It's still working just fine. I mean, it's been at least probably two months or better. So we got the new one right here. We're going to get it put in there. It should be pretty quick and easy, but I just kind of wanted to show you that it's uh, working. And of course, you know, it's always one of those perfect days when it's raining. We do have a pump down switch right here, so we just flip that. It should pump down here and shut off here in a second. Anyhow, remember how we did this? So all we got to do is unplug that like this. And we can hook the other motor right up to it. All right. Single-handedly got it out. Got her labeled. That way they'll know what it is. I'll put that inside the little Tyler house, what have you there. And uh, we got this one marked. So we know when it was it'll probably last a couple years and it'll go out again but ain't my problem that's what you want you're going to get what you want uh perfectly good motor working great we did need to move remove that harness there which just two screws and we'll just reuse that other ugly one there i'm not going to chop up that harness to put it back in that'd be kind of ignoramus uh this motor here is perfectly good we'll go ahead and put that inside the tyler house all right, four little screws there. Get the fan blade back on. Release that solenoid and let's let her eat. There she goes. Saving all kinds of money now, even if it did cost 10 times what the other one did. We're all good. Well, unfortunately, this thing's in defrost and this customer here doesn't give us a password to be able to kick it out of defrost. So all I can do is double check contact her, make sure it turns, which we already seen it do it on its own earlier. A little bit of a shake there on the startup, but it's balanced good enough that when it's running, it's not uh, bouncing. Uh, everything's back on. Pump down switch is on. As you can see, there it goes. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's truly out of defrost yet. Maybe it is. Let's just take a look. Probably still on pump down. Side glass is full. Suction's coming back cold. If you guys enjoy the video and you want to see more like it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Until next time, catch you on the next one. Later. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Now I'll cut that out or switch that one to the front. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap this one up. Everything checked out good. Uh, we're going to come back and change the condenser motor and put the OEM one back in there. We'll end up leaving the other one uh, most likely in the compressor room over there. Uh, otherwise, uh, we're pretty good to go. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Later.